Good morning, Knights. It's Mrs. Hackensmith. Today is Tuesday, May 19th. On the matrix today, it tells us that we are going to read a story called Pheasant and Kingfisher. And while I'm reading the story, I want you to pay close attention to the order of the events in which they happen in the story. Because tomorrow, we're going to be sequencing those events. We're going to be putting them in order. So let me give you a little background about this story, Pheasant and Kingfisher. It is a myth. A myth explains how something came to be. And it can use fantasy or magic to tell the story. So the focus of our story today is going to be realism versus um, fantasy. All right, so realism means things that can really happen. Fantasy means things that are not real, magical, kind of like how unicorns are fantasy. All righty, I have an anchor chart here that I want you to see. <clears throat> okay, so realism means it could happen. In fantasy, it cannot happen. Realism means real. Fantasy means make-believe. Realism can be funny, fact-filled, fictional, let me see, Fictional, but have elements that could happen. So even a fictional story can be realism if it talks about things that could happen. Now, a fantasy has stories where animals are talking, animals are wearing clothes, there are magical places or things, like I mentioned the unicorn. And it can also have silly characters, like look at this guy over here. He would be fantasy, but the little girl would be real. So as we're reading the story, I want you to think about things that could really happen and things that really couldn't happen are more make-believe or fantasy. Okay, so that's what our focus is. Realism versus fantasy. <clears throat> now, this story comes to us from Australia. Australia is one of our seven continents. It is an island, and a lot of Australia is very dry and very hot, and that's where our story comes from today. Now, the author of our story, Catherine um, Burnt, she is... Uh, anthropologist. An anthropologist is a person who studies how people live their lives. She, she studies their cultures um, and their belief systems, everything about their, their culture is an anthropologist. And so this anthropologist was in Australia and she was studying the Aborigines. Aborigines are people who are native to Australia. They were there before anybody else was <clears throat> in Australia. Right now, there's lots of different people who live in Australia, just like there's lots of different people who live in America. But the Aborigines were the first people to live there. And that is the culture that Catherine, the anthropologist, was studying. And in their culture, they have oral traditions or stories, myths, that explain how things happen in their world. And this is one of those stories. So I'm gonna read the back here, the, the blurb. It says, for generations, the Aboriginal people have told a tale of two men who came from the far Northwest. One was Book Book, the pheasant, and the other was Barid Barid, the Kingfisher. Their story has been recorded by anthropologist Catherine Burnt 
and beautifully illustrated by Aboriginal artist Aron Raymond Meeks. They have preserved this small part of the vast rich culture of the Aboriginal people to share with you and other readers the world over. So what Catherine did was she wrote this down. <clears throat> um, a lot of time in cultures, stories were just told orally by speaking and telling them to their children, and then their children would tell their children, and it would be handed down from generation to generation. So grandma would tell her daughter, daughter would tell her daughter, and the stories would keep going. They call that an oral tradition, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Oh, I can show it to you right now. Um, the oral tradition is one of our vocabulary words for today. Um, a story that is passed down orally or spoken from generation to generation. The pheasant is one of the characters in our story, and a pheasant is a bird. Um, my husband goes pheasant hunting, and what he does is he walks along the cornfields where the pheasants are trying to find the corn to eat, and that's where he hunts them. A kingfisher is another type of bird. He's kind of blue and orangey color. Um, he's more of like a, like, like a songbird, but a pheasant is... Um, he's he's bigger so he is about pheasants I suppose are about this big and then they've got a really long tail they're really pretty and then the kingfisher is a smaller bird and he's kind of blue and orange alrighty and then the oral tradition the story that's told from one generation to another so remember our focus is realism versus fantasy. I want you to think about what could really happen in the story and what really could not happen in the story. And remember our myth explains how something came to be. Alrighty, let me see, is there anything else I want to tell you about? Comes from Australia. Um, at the beginning of the book, there's a little blurb here by the, uh, by the illustrator. Here's a picture of him. He says, my childhood memories are of my relatives in Cairns, Australia, telling me many stories about the bush. The bush is a nickname for Australia. So they'll say out in the bush. Okay. Some of these stories taught me about certain foods called bush tucker. Others taught me about the places I should stay away from because of the dangers there. Still other stories were similar to Pheasant and Kingfisher, teaching me how things came to be. And that is a myth. All right. I think that's all I wanted to say about our story before we actually begin. All righty. So here we go. Pheasant and Kingfisher. Long, long ago, Two men came from far in the northwest, from the other side of Bathurst and Melville Islands. One was called Book Book, the pheasant, and the other was Barid Barid, the kingfisher. Book Book has the shorter beak, Barid Barid has the longer beak. Um, the bird today has a long beak the kingfisher, and the pheasant has a shorter beak. Both of them carried fire sticks, and as they came along, they set fire to the dry grass. Every night they made camp, and each morning they started off again. They walked on and on with their palm leaf baskets of fresh water to drink when the country was dry. It was a long way to travel, but at last they came to a place where they wanted, where bamboo spears grew beside the stream. <clears throat> so they found the bamboo. Bamboo is a type of kind of like a tree. 
They heard the bamboo stems whistling together, and the mosquitoes were thick down by the water, so they camped a little way off on higher ground. They stayed there for a long time. One day they would go hunting and bring back plenty of food, and the next day they would just stay in their camp. Often they would sing and dance together, and they were busy cutting bamboo spears with sharp points and carving spears with strong wooden blades. So from the bamboo, they made spears. I would think that's what they used to hunt with. At last, they had a visitor, a man called Najalambo. I left a lot of men back that way, he told them. They are coming to kill you. This place belongs to them, and you should have asked them first before you cut all those bamboos. What are you going to do? They talked together for a while, and the two men gave him food and meat before he went home. So Book Book and Barrett Barrett were cutting down bamboo that belonged to somebody else. And so now those men are upset. You would be upset if somebody was taking something of yours and they didn't ask for it. Then Book Book and Barrett Barrett began to get ready. They were both clever men, very smart, and had plenty of power, and they knew just what to do. Book Book painted himself all over with dark red clay and a little bit of white. Barrett Barrett painted himself yellow. They made their spears straight and sharp and then sat there waiting. So they're waiting for the men to come, aren't they? Sounds like they're gonna fight them with their spears. Soon, as they watched, they saw a crowd of armed men coming up to them. They stood up and began to throw their spears. But spears were flying all over the camp. There were so many men, all throwing spears at Book Book and Barrett Barrett. They couldn't dodge them. They grew weak and short of breath. Let's get away now, they said to each other. It was time for them to use their powers. Feathers started coming out all over their bodies and their arms turned into wings. So can you see the feathers on their bodies? <clears throat> They're starting to morph into <clears throat> birds, aren't they? Book Book put bamboo spears and his spear thrower at his back, and they grew into a wide fan-shaped tail. Barrett Barrett made his tail from a burning fire stick. Their enemies were trying hard to spear them, but now it was too late. The two men flew away from them high into the sky. They did not talk like men anymore. Book, 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 book. Book, book was a pheasant now. Barrett, Barrett, Barrett. His friend was a kingfisher. So those are the different bird calls that those birds make. Book, 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 book. Barrett, Barrett, Barrett. And they turned into birds. As they flew, their enemies on the ground below them turned into stone. You can see them there today. But the two men turned into birds, and they still fly about, calling out their own names. So, what did this book teach us about what came to be? I believe that Australia has rock formations. And if you ever go to Australia, maybe you can see some of these rock forms. 
and these rock forms were made when the men who were fighting the birds grew into stone. And now we have the pheasant bird and the kingfisher bird flying around living in our world. And they came because of the war between these men and them. That's how they came to be, according to the myth. Pheasant and Kingfisher is one of hundreds of Aboriginal stories recorded by anthropologist Catherine Burnt while working in the north of Australia. She recorded them to learn how Aboriginal people think about their world. She wrote the stories in the local language, Gungwingu, and then carefully translated them into English. Some Aboriginal people have said, the land owns us. We don't own the land. They feel they are part of the land, and from the time they are children, they learn the songs and stories about it. For thousands of years, these songs and stories have been part of the people's oral tradition and belief system. So that is how the kingfisher and the pheasant came to be. Okay, so that was our story, Pheasant and Kingfisher. So I want to go back to this chart here that talks about realism and fantasy. I want you to think about what part of the stories could really happen and what part of the story could not really happen. And then tomorrow, I'm going to ask you for your ideas and we're going to make a chart of realism versus fantasy for our story, The Kingfisher. So be thinking about what was real, what could really happen from the story, and what was fantasy, what could not happen from the story. Alrighty, so that's for tomorrow. And then also we're going to sequence the events of the story. Alrighty, moving on to math. Yesterday we did our um, problem solving. That was that was kind of a long math lesson. Today we're going to do check my progress. So we're just going to stop and we're going to check and see how well we're doing um, telling time to the hour and telling time to the half hour. All right, so you need to get page 611, 612, and we're going to do numbers 1 through 15. All right, so here's my page, 611. It says check my progress at the top. We're gonna do the vocabulary part together, and then I'm going to talk you through the rest, but you're gonna do that on your own. All righty, so let's take a look at our vocabulary. We have the word minute, analog clock, hour, digital clock, half hour. So, 60 minutes is one, what do you think? Each one of these little dots is a minute. And there are 60 of them in one hour. Good. And then you're gonna put a little check mark by it. You've already used it. You're only gonna use every word once. Alrighty, 30 minutes is one, if we just do half of the clock, 30 minutes is one, yep, half hour. And put your little check mark by it. Alrighty, now 60 seconds. See how this is 60 minutes? 60 seconds. Sometimes clocks have that third hand that tools around really fast. And when it goes around once, that is 60 seconds. So 60 seconds are in one minute. 60 seconds is one minute. Minute. So you have to look at these words. 
60 seconds are in one minute. 60 minutes are in one hour. Okay, number four. A blank uses only numbers to show the time. So we've got analog clock and digital clock. Which one only uses numbers? That is the clock that looks like this. That is the digital clock. Remember, you should spell these correctly because the word bank is right up here at the top. The digital clock. Okay. So we only have analog clock left. Let's see if it works. An analog clock has an hour hand and a minute hand to show time. Here's our analog clock. The hour hand is the short hand. The minute hand is the long hand. So an analog clock. And that's the one with the face. It's got the minute hand and the hour hand. So that's your analog clock. Alrighty, are we good on vocab? I think we should be. Okay, so down here, they've given you the analog clock. You have to write what time it is. Now remember, if the minute hand is up here at the 12, that is no minutes past 12, so that's going to give you the zero, zero. But if the minute hand is half past, that's going to give you how many minutes? Let's count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So if the minute hand is down here at the 6, that is the 30 minutes after the hour. But if it's up here at the 12, that is zero minutes past the hour. Okay, let's turn over to 612. Up at the top, you get to draw the hands on the analog clock, and you get to draw the time on the digital clock. Now, don't forget, the hour hand is the short hand. So when you draw it, it goes to the number, but it does not go through the number, okay? And the minute hand goes all the way through the number, that's the long one. So this clock says three o'clock, right? Now, if you had to draw 3.30, your minute hand would be at the 30. Your hour hand would not be at the three. Remember when it's half past, your hour hand is in the middle of the three o'clock and the four o'clock. It is halfway to four o'clock, but not there yet. So you have to go back. This would be 330. Okay. Number 12 and number 13, you just have to write what time it is. And let's look at our brain builders. Kevin has three classes in a row. The first two classes are two hours long. His third class is one and a half hours long. Kevin's first class is at seven o'clock. When will Kevin's last class end? Alrighty. So we're going to have three classes. One, two, three. So he has three classes in a row. One, two, three. The first two classes are each two hours long. So these are two hours long. So let's write, let's underline that. Two hours long. The third class is an hour and a half long. Kevin's first class is at seven o'clock. When will Kevin's last class end? So we know that his first class is at seven 
o'clock. Now, what do we know about his first two classes? How long are they? The first two classes are two hours long. All right, so if I have seven o'clock and I put that in my head, here's my seven o'clock, and I put seven in my head, I'm gonna count on two more hours. So we're gonna go to eight o'clock, nine o'clock. If you have seven in your head and you count on two more hours, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So his second class starts at nine o'clock. Okay, now, the first two classes are two hours long. So what time will this class go until? This class will go until, let's put nine in our head and count on two more hours. Nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Okay, so this third class then will start at 11 o'clock. But that's not our answer. It says his third class is one and a half hours long. So this class is not two hours long. When will Kevin's last class end? Not when it starts. When will it end? Well, that was kind of tricky. All right, so if this class starts at 11 and it goes for an hour and a half. So 11 o'clock, let's go for an hour and it's going to be at 12 o'clock, but it is an hour and a half. So now we have to keep going and we have to go a half hour, which is 30 minutes. So what time does the class end? Let's see. Our hour hand is between the 12 and the one. So we go back to the 12 and our minute hand shows 30 minutes. So it is 1230. That's when the class will end, 12.30. Are you with me on that one? Okay. Let's look at 15. The class bell rings every 30 minutes. All right, so every 30 minutes. The first one rings at 8.30. What time will the fourth bell ring? So we're going to make a pattern. Well, I'm gonna draw a picture because that's easier for me to figure out. So let's see, we want the fourth bell. So we have the first bell, the second bell, the third bell, the fourth bell. The first one rings at 8.30, okay. So let's put our clock here at 8.30. Now, it says the bell rings every 30 minutes. So let's go 30 minutes. There's 30 minutes, what time is it? The hour hand is pointing at the nine, the minute hand is straight up, nine o'clock. So the second bell is going to ring at nine o'clock. Okay, now let's go for another 30 minutes. The third bell is going to ring at, what time does it say on the clock? We went 30 more minutes, 30 minutes is half a clock. It is not, it's between the nine and the 10. It's not 10 o'clock yet. It's still nine o'clock, so nine, 9.30 will be the third clock, 
And then let's go another 30 minutes, halfway around the clock. And what time will our fourth bell ring? The hour hand is at the 10. The minute hand is straight up, so this is 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. So we're going to color in the bubble that says 10 o'clock. That's what time the fourth bell will ring. All right, so for your homework then, do six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Make sure your pencil is nice and sharp so that your hands are nice and crisp and in the right area. All right, and then don't forget to think about what is real from the story of uh, Pheasant and Kingfisher and what is fantasy. And we'll work on that some more tomorrow. Goodbye, second grade.